Hello, everyone, and welcome to Pop Culture Spread, our fun weekly movie and streaming new show with a twist. If you are new to the channel, welcome. My name is Rick. Hit that like and subscribe button. Also, hit that notification bell. We would really appreciate it. Also, remember, you can hear us on audio podcast on Spotify, Apple, Amazon, and where all good podcasts are found. You can also check out our merchandise store. All the links are down below. Joining me on the show, as always, here's the other half of Pop Culture Spread and my good mate, VHS Jace. How are you, buddy? I'm doing very well, mate. Very well. Our first show back for 2024. Yes, it is. And we've got some some good stories. We've got a bit to talk about today. So uh, how about we, we get into it and let's talk some big news. Mickey Mouse is now in the public domain, sort of. What is going in the big house, Jace? Uh, well, well, I can tell you, Rick, that this is a bit of a significant time in history. Yes, wow. Disney World, we are now seeing the early versions of Mickey Mouse now becoming in public domain. And what that means is that now you can use that character free of copyright wow now, that's huge only early versions of mickey mouse you can do that so for example as you saw on this screen here the steamboat willy mickey mouse you can absolutely kind of use but there are later versions that you cannot use um, uh, okay and i know that the disney lawyers would have been trying to think of everything they could to ensure that they could have kept it but they couldn't make it happen um and a disney sp spoke person come out and said more modern versions of mickey will remain unaffected by the expiration of steamboat willy copyright and mickey will continue to play a leading role as a global ambassador for the walt disney company in our storytelling theme park attractions and merchandise we will, of course, continue to protect our rights in the more modern of versions of Mickey Mouse and other works that remain subject to copyright. If you read between the lines in that very corporate like <laughs> little footnote there, it's basically, in my estimations, this won't be a problem for them moving forward. They would have put stronger copyrights on yeah. there. And certainly, I don't think they can do anything about the length of the copyright, but Disney will be just fine. So, But it is it is interesting because it's the first time I can remember in my life that we're seeing something so significant in popular culture become public domain. Mm. You know what I mean? I mean, like, none of the things that we're into, like Star Wars or Marvel characters or anything like that that we're into, none of them... Uh, public domain you know we, we, we've seen obviously like Alice Wonderland and some of those kind of fairy tale books come but this is the first kind of big significant icon of pop culture now become public domain interesting stuff so how did this this what started what 95 years after publication or something some copyright law yes like, yes like, 95 old? years is correct so and now and now people are using it now now you're free to use it however you see fit and Christ. and that's really interesting isn't it mm, well yeah. I guess they come, yeah they're gonna be absolutely pissed disney but anyway well, uh, yeah it. yeah i mean you would be you would be because and uh you would be because well they didn't own that character but they did do an adaptation of winnie the pooh yeah so they had a little bit of a taste of what it's like when you lose ownership of a cat well they didn't own it but Winnie the Pooh and Disney had been very intertwined for the last 50, 60 years. Mm. And when that book mm. became public domain, that meant the character could be used. And it did get used, as we all and know. It, and it did get used, yes. Yes, if you've seen that movie. Yes. Uh, but all right, let's 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 get Running into in uh, what's in some other news, Jace. <laughs> Wow, I guess this rolls into the previous yeah. story we just spoke about. It does, it does. Okay. Another Mickey Mouse horror film is coming from the Mean One director and Terrified 2 producers. We knew this was going to happen. Uh, I don't know, yep. I've seen the trailer. Jace, have you seen the trailer to this? 
No, movie? I have not. I have saved okay. myself from seeing it. Um, because... I won't say anything then, but yeah. Oh, well, please do. Please do. What's the trailer like? Let us know, Rick. Not bad, actually. It's it's you pretty good. It. Yeah, I liked it. It's it's still got that cheesiness to it. Um, but, it, I, you know, I haven't seen the Winnie Pooh movie. So but but I don't, basically I don't it says here I'm it's about a sadistic mouse yeah. tormenting a group of unsuspecting fairy passengers. So, yeah, I mean, hard. like, it's going to make money because it's Mickey Mouse and people want to see it. But if anyone saw that that Blood and Honey Winnie the Pooh one, that was awful. And it's just sad in a way because, you know, we get these – these things were kids' things, man. Like, they were important Correct. to kids, Mickey Mouse and Winnie the Pooh. And now the first thing we do is, like, we got to get him killing people. <laughs> you know – it's that, it's that, and like places like Pornhub are going to destroy this poor icon, you know. Um, so, but what do you do? I mean, people will go and see it. It'll make a bunch of money. Of course money. it will. It will. It'll, like it'll it make a bunch of money. Where else but are you going to yeah, see Do I like the idea people? of that? I just wish people would be more creative. You know, with their if they're going to use a public domain character, do something a bit more creative with it. Don't go straight to horror, but they go to horror because it's cheap and easy to make, and they make their money. Yeah. I mean, what yeah. happens to that now with these kids who know all about you know Mickey what, just Mouse? Destroys you know, that change that for them. It's, you know, it yeah. absolutely does. It absolutely does skewer their perception of what it is. So it's kind of like. You know, it's it's like the kids growing up today who love Bluey, and all of a mm. sudden they're older, and now Bluey's hacking people in a in a in a yeah. B grade horror film with a guy wearing a Bluey costume. Like, yeah, I'm just not a massive fan of the concept. I just I just think you've got an opportunity if it's a public domain, do something really interesting with the character, do something mm. different. That's what I would say. Yeah. Well, anyway, I'm sure it will terrify some kids out there, but anyway. Mm. We will move on. Let's move on to some uh, gaming news, James, which is quite interesting. A bit of Ga well, gaming news and kind of film news at the same time. I think. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Minecraft. Jack Black joins another video game adaptation. Good to see Jack Black out there again. He's done some great yeah. games with Super Mario Brothers being one of them, which was a phenomenal movie. Yep. Yep. So if anybody knows with... anything about Jack Black, knows he's a massive game. He's a massive guy. Mm. He loves it, and especially Minecraft. And people go, oh, he's only doing it because he likes the film. Now, that is absolutely nah. a part of it. But don't think for a second that someone Jack, like Jack Black's caliber doesn't have an expert team around him advising him, or he'd be <laughs> delivered nothing but a good script because it's got to go through his team, his agents, mm. Um, mm. unless he's developed it, which I don't think he has. Um, he signed on to co-star. He's apparently supposed to star with Jason Momoa in this adaptation. What? Yeah. So, uh. um, yeah, it's not the only one he's involved in. If you have a look, like you said, Super Mario Brothers, he's also uh, playing the voice of Claptrap in the long-delayed Borderlands movie with oh. Kate Blanchett and Kevin Hart. Um, and, yeah, he's been around. He's got Kung Fu Panda 4 coming up. Of course, and uh, I'm sure Super Mario sequels. But Jack Black wouldn't do this film unless there's something to it. And do you know what yeah. something has taught me? Ever since the Lego movie, the Barbie movie, um, and that I don't, I don't scoff at these ideas anymore. Yeah. Remember when we all balked and went, David Finch is making a movie about Facebook. How do mm. you do that? What is it, the dumbest idea in the world? And we got the Social Network. Um, that's the same with Lego movie. How the hell are you gonna make a movie? We get the Lego movie, which is incredible, you know. So I I'm not into the franchise, not into the game, but I understand the weight it's had and the influence it's had on the young generation because it's massive. This thing is massive. Well, I can't say I'm not a gamer, so I've never played Minecraft, so I have no mm -hmm. idea what it's about. Mm -hmm. But I, well, it's I obviously it's a everywhere. first. It's a it's an open world world building thing done in a first person shooter. Where everything's kind of pixelated into blocks. Yeah, um, 
and it's a very simple explanation for a game that I'm, I know that means a lot to millions of people. And you know what? With the recent kind of success, or we're starting to see video game movies come out and be good, um, of course, they, they're going to want to make a Minecraft movie. So, um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see how this all pans out. But Jack Black, even though on the surface it may seem like a really dumb move, he's a smart nah. guy. He knows what he's doing. And I'm sure that having him in it with Jason Momoa, yeah, I'm rooting for I'm also rooting for Jason Momoa now to do more things away from Aquaman. Well, he's not going to be Aquaman away from again, DC, but man. try to wash that stink off, Paul Bugger. That so. and, uh, yeah, Fast and the Furious because that was just terrible. Fast X. Yeah. But fa oh. those Fast X movies, those Fast movies are no, the Fast that, movies, yeah. Yeah, but that character. I, I think Aquaman 2 is more the big blow to him. Is that yeah anyway anyway yeah. well i'm sure we'll see a bit more with uh, jack black on that one yeah all right let's uh let's roll into the next story i know you've probably got a few things to say about this one mate uh we've got a bit of Maybe. star wars news mm. new mm. star wars director provokes controversy among fans yeah. oh no more controversy amongst fans and star wars world what's going on jace before we even start bloody filming a, a single frame of this movie, there's controversy. <laughs> so the what? new director, who Sharmin obeyed Shion, I think is the way. Probably not the way you pronounce it, I, but anyway, I'm very. And, and she's come out and said she recently expressed her excitement on being tied to Star Wars and the importance of having a female director. I'm very yes. thrilled that about this project because I feel what we're about to create is something very special. We're in 2024 oh. now, and it's about time we had a woman come forward to shape a story in a galaxy far, far away. Oh, okay. Okay, I'm annoyed at this big time. Let big it rip. time. And i tell you why I'm annoyed at it, mate. I'm annoyed because... You, you've got to invert sexual, you know, you've got to insert sexual politics into this, don't you? The other thing is how disrespectful to creators like Deborah Chow and Bryce Dallas Howard, who have been female right. directors at Star Wars now for years. Deborah Chow led, directed, and ran the Obi Wan Kenobi show herself. We've already had strong in female influence in Star Wars, and we will continue to do it. But to come out and say it's been inferred that it's been a boys' club, and we've never had a strong female influence. I mean, talk about female influence in Star Wars. If it wasn't for bloody George Lucas's wife at the time, Marsha Lucas, Star Wars wouldn't have happened because she edited the film and made it what it was. It is absolutely offensive and ridiculous ridiculous for this director to come out and it's indicative of your jobs to direct a good make a good movie have your social politics out there afterwards but just make a good movie first all right because that's your job and at the end of the day i think you play a dangerous game when you start talking politics in popular franchises Look at Renee's, uh, at the Renee girl, whatever, the, the girl from Snow White. She's come out and half the audience, wherever you sit on the side of the fence, yeah. left, right, in the middle, whatever, damage has been done by words to the bottom right. line. Now, if you start infecting a corporate's bottom line because of what you're saying, then what do you think the corporate entity is going to do? Eventually, it's going to extract you out of that situation. You know, and and at the end of the day, I just I, I I was very offended for Deborah Chow and Bryce Dallas Howard, who have been probably the two better directors out of the current Star Wars, you know, um, uh, streaming stuff. Which, oh well, this is a film. I don't care. Star Wars on TV has been as good as mm. what Star Wars has been. Well, not better than what Star Wars has been in movies in the last fifteen to twenty years. So. Yeah, nah, very annoyed at that. And that director now, I'm folding. She better just direct a good movie because she doesn't. I'm not going to give her the time of day. I'm just sick of so, this kind of sexual politics being infused into everything. If you've got something to say, it, say it through the camera lens, not in a bloody yeah. press uh, bite, you know, because you may have said that as part of a big conversation and all kind of made sense and it's been taken out of context. Um, Too bad, you know the way the world works. You've said it, you're going to get a lot of un un unhappy people. Ah, what else? Horrible. What's her claim to find? What, what has she directed? I've never. 
I Is actually don't a, know. Do you I don't know, know who she's... she's come from, where she's come from, to be honest with you. Um, yeah. And I'm sure they've chosen her because mm-hmm. she's a very, very talented director. Um, but, I believe that. Um, and so none of that is in question to me. What is in question to me is this this current world where people just say things off the cuff and don't think about what, what you're kind of getting at. You know, Bryce Dallas Howard is a fantastic director, a fantastic mm. director. So is Deborah Chow. And just to dismiss them because so how come you they think you're doing get... something important, get off your high horse. Why, you know, it makes you wonder why Lucas Films did go for them for directing this new movie. Or, well, you know I'm I mean? sure Maybe. Kathleen Kennedy. I mean, here's the other problem Kathleen Kennedy, and, and I like Kathleen Kennedy, but she has hmm. been come out previously and said, you know, I'm more stronger in female influence on Star Wars. Fair enough. Don't have a problem with that. I don't really have a problem with that. But, yeah. to the, <laughs> what is, is, that, is that more important than the art you're trying to create? is the personnel behind the scenes. That's the question I ask. Like, what's more important, the finished product or how you're perceived socially, that you're diverse? Like, if a Star Wars movie movie was made completely by African-Americans or Sudanese or Japanese, and it's a great film, that's all that matters. What matters? That's Correct. all that matters. It doesn't matter who's behind the scenes. And the fact that we have to insert representation into this um, is, is A, I understand it, it is important, but B, it's a dangerous game to play, and I just mm. don't want to see the art form suffer because of these kind of statements and these kind of, you know, you know I don't know, Rick. It just it, it, it's I know it's prickly ground and I know people go, ah, not freak out at me. But the reality no. is, man, why did it need to be said in the first place? And I'm not having a go because she's having a go at men, because I didn't take this out. I just think she's just being very dismissive of her people that have come before her and created content that has allowed this woman now to get an opportunity to make another Star Wars film. Because if it wasn't for people like Deborah Chow and Bryce Dallas Howard paving the way in their directing uh, of Mandalorian. And if that was a bomb, there were going to be no more movies. The Star Wars universe was done for. So, mm. you know, just have some respect is my thing. Um, see how it goes. I mean, mm. it's... Uh, you, you asked know, me how Star it felt. You're very passionate. <laughs> you're very passionate, you Star Wars fans, you fanboys. Oh, I mean, come so, on, man. Come on. Yeah. Just, anyway. Yeah. That's all <laughs> good. All right, mate. Let's uh, let's get into the uh, main intro train wreck of the week, mate. <laughs> you know um, that other story could have been train wreck of the week so easily, <laughs> eh? But I found a better one this week. <laughs> what have we got this week, Jace? I, fa- I found a better one. All right, this one <laughs> I thought was hilarious to me. Um, as we know, Oppenheimer came out this year. We, I don't mm-hmm. know if you've seen Oppenheimer yet, Rick. Did you get a chance yep. to see it? Yep. I love the film. It's a bit pretentious. It's, I give it an 8 out of 10. Um, but it's still wonderful. It's a master class. I could never make anything mm-hmm. close to that. But yeah. either way, Christopher Nolan, um, you know, the director of that film, had an interesting situation recently because he was um, doing Peloton and noticed yeah. as he was doing his class – the instructor was ragging on one of his films. So basically what had happened, he goes, I was on my Peloton, right? You know, those things where you live stream. Yeah, Yeah, bye. I'm dying. And the instructor started talking about one of my films and said, did anyone see this? That's a couple of my hours of my life I'll never get back again, no one said. <laughs> when Rex Reed takes a shit on your film, he doesn't ask you to work out. <laughs> he goes, in today's world where opinions are everywhere, there's sort of this idea that film criticism is being democratized, de- democra- yeah, more democratic. But I, for one, think the cri- critical appreciation from films shouldn't be an instinct, but should be a profession. <laughs> Uh, so basically, dude, he's there busting his hump on his bike, probably thinking really good about himself. Yeah, yeah man, yeah. like, you know, just made a billion, another billion dollars for Warner Brothers. Uh, I'm doing all right. 
And then me like the director going, you know, that Tenant film, that's shit. Because that's what they were talking about, Tenant. <laughs> wow. That's, uh, that's, hey, mate, that's... if you ever need to be humbled, if you're getting too big in your life, big, you know, in your stack, because Chris Nolan, I mean, he's probably the prestige yeah. director of our time. As, I don't think it's a bad thing every now and again just to cop one. Yeah. Just to cop one, you know, just to bring you down to earth a little bit, you know. <laughs> So I thought this was but it is a funny way, though. Like you are, you know, like you said, you're doing a workout and whatever, and then someone just shits on you like that. Yeah. <laughs> from a yeah, fitness like... instructor, too. Yeah, yeah. Not like, from what does she know about movie? making films? You know, <laughs> just, that is oh, pretty funny. good. That is pretty funny. I'll, I'll give that you is that. pretty funny. It, it, it just, it's just like, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm sure it's happened to YouTubers as well, where they've been. <laughs> Ragging on a film, not realizing that the director just happened to be on YouTube and seen it, and you know, and yeah. I'm sure that's happened many yeah. times. So, hey man, Peloton, it's, it's a new world. Why not? You know, are they, uh, are they, is it a live? Is it live? Peloton, I believe so. I believe you can actually have it like you're watching a live stream, and you, yeah, yeah. okay. So I don't know. I don't one. own one, and I'm not um, about to yeah. buy one. <laughs> yeah. I don't need you another clothes rack. Right? I don't need you another clothes rack. Yeah. You don't want to get shit on by, you know, a Peloton instructor. Anyway. Everybody I've ever known who's bought fitness equipment, especially a bike, guarantee there's always clothes hanging off it at some point. Yeah. Yeah. That's what happens to them. <laughs> we've all been there. We've all done it. We've all got We've all got That's right. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. All I right. do like that kind of record of the week, Jace. All right. Let's um let's get into the uh, next segment. But we've got a new one, Jace. We used to well, uh, we do. But let's just, yeah, let's, we got something new. So you know right. what? Let's just let's have a look. Roll with it. Let's have a look. As you know, normally we've been doing great Aussie telly, but it's a new year, so let's expand. Let's go. Let's take this baby global, and so that's what we're doing global. this week, mate. We're taking this show global. So basically, I've decided to, to, to look over the internet and see if I can find things from all around the world and compare what their living room experience has been like compared to our living room experience. I've watched your television. Nice. nice. So this week, we're going to take a look at some shorts and, and a quick shout out to all the the clips that I borrowed and the creators, because I'm very appreciative that you found this footage. So let's start with this, all right? Okay, let's have a look. Japanese TV shows are different. Okay. <laughs> What? That looked like it was um, Squid Game, their version of Squid Game. So what we're going to show is Japan, as you can tell, Japanese game mm. shows, which borderline on on entertainment and torture for mm. a population, if you've seen it. Mm. So have a look at this. I like that because only the Japanese. We would do something like Squid Game. I think they did a game on Netflix. But the Japanese, they're willing for pain to be involved in some aspect, I don't should. they? And they're very voyeuristic people. I mean, extremely voyeuristic. Enough that um, it can get a bit creepy sometimes. But let's have a look at this next clip of a game show, a real game show in Japan. <laughs> Weird, right? Like, what? they stuck a guy in a glass the... box with a bear pushing it over. Uh, why? I have What's no it? idea. It's Japan. Why? It's Japan. It's just bizarre. It's just bizarre, right? Like, our game shows are like Family Feud or Wheel of Fortune. Um, Yeah, not exactly, you know, things like that. And our reality shows, I mean, like, 
Our hmm. reality shows can get weird a little bit, but not as weird as this. This man named Nasabi was selected to participate in a mysterious reality show in Japan. He was given a hard task to stay alone and unclothed in a tiny apartment completely secluded from the outside world. The producers of the show convinced Nasabi that he was participating in a unique experiment that may or may not be aired on television. They led him to believe that he was self-recording his day-to-day -day experiences for further review. However, he didn't know that his most private and personal Personal moments were being broadcast for the world to see and make fun of. Wow. <laughs> what? <laughs> so when they said, like, so this guy's being tricked into it, all right? And they're showing everything. Even his, when they said most intimate moments, you know exactly what they're inferring to. All got broadcast on television. That's insane. He and these were only some of the shows, Rick, that I could show today. There were yeah. other game shows that was had so explicit sexually, I couldn't actually show it. What in in, in Japan? It is unbelievable. Japan. They I go for it over there, but it is very different, isn't it? So that's just bizarre. So they just lied to him. He must have signed some sort of waiver. No, he, as you said in the clip, he just, he kind of thought he was part of experiment. He didn't know yeah. whether it would air. So if you're television, you're signing off it. You're going, well, they're not going to show my junk, are they? And they're not going to show the more intimate moments of my life. And they, and no, they, they did. did. They did. So that's pretty crazy so i hope you enjoy it this year guys we're gonna go like i said all over the world this year we're gonna have to try to find clips shorts like anything from around the world that's a bit different a bit bizarre try to get a different perspective of what people are watching around the world that is awesome i love it absolutely love it and uh some good choices there Japanese game shows well i must have to check if those out start with that, it let's start weird you don't get any weirder than japan than Awesome, awesome. Well, that about wraps up the show for this week, Jace. It's been an absolute pleasure as always, mate. But before we go, let's give a big plug out to everyone. Let us know where uh, myself, you can find me here on the channel uh, with a lot of trailer reactions as well. So check them out. We've got a whole backlog catalog as well. So check those out. Jace, where can everyone find you on the uh, internet? You can find me genuinely. I'm either here or I'm over on the Jason Roy Gaston channel working with jason gaston the tiktok celebrity the man himself uh we do a slew of different shows over there we're having a lot of fun come and join us we're, we're doing a review of big trouble in little china coming up so you'll be able to check that out that's going to be a lot of fun plus a slew of like i said a lot of other fun things going on there uh also you can occasionally find me and jason well jason's a regular host but you can occasionally find me over there but it is, of course, all about Captain Joe Dove, and I'm talking Captain Squadron. There he we is. Can check them out every Thursday, 9 p.m. I, in fact, will be on this week's show because I do believe they're doing a review of Star Trek V, The Final Frontier, the most hated Star Trek movie there is. Um, and, uh, yeah, that's basically it. Oh, also check out Joe. If you're into Doctor Who, he does a great little podcast called The Console Room Podcast over in his 2 com, where there's a whole lot of other stuff as well. And that ties it all up, Rick. That's all the plugs. Wonderful, Jace. That's fantastic. Guys, all the links will be down below, so check all those guys out. It's great content. Thank you, everyone, for joining us on this week's show, and I will see you all next week, Jace. I'll see you next week as well. With a oh, whole new yeah. set of stories. That's it. And some weird TV stuff. <laughs> Definitely weird. <laughs> Thanks for watching the Pop Culture Spread YouTube channel. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that notification bell. Also, don't forget to follow us on all our social media platforms. And if you're looking for some quality wear, don't forget to check out our merchandise store available right now.